Alright guys, I'm going to go over um, Firestarter 16, Firestarter 17, Firestarter 18. So this is going to give you a little bit of insight into everything that's kind of going on right now in case you're struggling. One thing I do want to add to this one is... I think I gotta add the letters here A, B, C, and then D. So we should have A, B, congruent to C, B, A, C, good. All right. So I forgot those letters on there. Now remember, whenever we're doing a proof, we're always gonna start with statements and reasons. So if you're not sure what to do, this should at least start your proof. Now remember, the reason we're doing proofs is because we're trying to figure out how to use logic and reasoning. We're trying to figure out how to kind of use a little bit of common sense almost, but with math involved, which makes things a little bit more difficult. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look and I'm going to find out what do I have given. Remember, we always start with given. So look, this right here is given. They wrote it down. So this is AC. And if you don't know, this BD that little upside down T means perpendicular. So the reason for that is given. And the other given that we have is AB is congruent to CB given. Now, I told you to use hypotenuse leg. So you need to have 90 degrees. So hypotenuse leg right here you must have a 90 degree angle somewhere. Right? If you don't have that, you can't use hypotenuse leg. It's not possible. So hypotenuse, the hypotenuse, that is the longest side of a right triangle. Um, if you're not sure where to find it, just look across the 90 degree angle. So for example, I look here. AB is the hypotenuse. And we can already see that AB is congruent to CB. So instead of using S, A, and S type of statements, I'm going to worry about hypotenuse statements, leg statements, that's any other side, or in 90 degree angle statements. So I already have the hypotenuse statement. So, AC perpendicular to BD, is that a hypotenuse statement? It's not, it's not side congruent to side. It's not a leg statement because it's not side congruent to side. So it's got, and it doesn't say anything about 90 degrees. So that's not, that's neither right now. We're gonna say that's a neither statement. So that's nothing. That's not, telling, that's not telling us a hypotenuse leg or anything. Remember, a neither statement will always directly lead to some type of, it's given for a reason. It will always lead to something. So I have to know what does perpendicular mean? Well, perpendicular means that they intersect at 90 degree angles. Perpendicular means that's 90 and that's 90. So I get to say this, and there's two different ways to write it. So you can write it two different ways. Um, one of the ways I write it is I use this little M, the measurement of ADB. And I use an equal sign because of the little M. So because of this little M right here, I'm using the equal sign, the measurement of angle CDB and it's equal to 90 degrees. And the reason for that is because that's what the definition of perpendicular is. So if you don't know what perpendicular means, if you don't know what this symbol means, if you don't know what that symbol means, then you, there's no way you're going to be able to, to tell me it's equal to 90 degrees. Now this is not the only way to write it. So you could write it this way. You could say angle ADB and angle CDB are right angles. So there's two ways to write it, and it would be the same thing. It would be the same exact reason. So this right here is your 90 degree angle statement. So we have a hypotenuse. We have a 90 degree angle statement. We need a leg. We need a leg statement right here. So I'm going to look at my triangle. I've used both. I've used the given. The purple given led to this purple writing right here. 
the green given is already used as a hypotenuse statement, so it's probably not going to. So I just got to look at the picture. What I find out that is I'm going to call this, I'm going to call ADB the blue triangle. And I'm going to call CDB the red triangle. And I notice that DB is red and blue, which means that I get to say DB is congruent to BD. And that's the reflexive property. Remember, that is one of the few things that you can find by just looking at the picture. And that's a leg. So now I have I have a hypotenuse, I have a leg, I have 90 degree angles. So I get to say triangle ADB. So remember coordination matter or correspondence matters. So A is at the corner of two dashes and no dashes. Um, looking at the 90 degree angle. So C and I should have put it I should have put three dashes there. So A is at the corner of one dash and or no dashes and two dashes. Um, make that red. C is at the corner of one dash and, or two dashes and no dashes. Then we go to D, then the B. And the reason is gonna be hypotenuse leg, so H L. Now remember, once you see this, once once this statement happens right here, once we have a triangle statement, then we get to fill out the rest of the triangle. So um, I could say angle A is congruent to angle C. I could say angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD. I could say AD is congruent to CD. So it's really whatever one of those three choices you have. I'm going to say AD is congruent to CD or I could say angle DAB is congruent to angle DCB I could even write the last one angle ABD is congruent to angle DBC and the reason for that is CPCTC so remember CPCTC will always follow the triangle congruence theorem. So CBCTC is always after one of those. That's it. All right, um, I thought 17 would be a good way to kind of think about how things work and flow and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of made 17 and 18 to go together and it's not a proof. These are just kind of ideas. So for example, make up a reasonable statement that would match up with the reason for sides below. So I'm gonna put, um, let's say AB is congruent to CD given so the reason that would make sense is if I um, it was written or in the figure alright so I could see um, AD is congruent to BD. Now, definition of midpoint. So look, it's a side statement, so that makes sense. All right, it's a, va it's a valid side statement. So this is just me making up some random statement that could make sense here. This is trying to get you to kind of think outside the box a little bit. Now, definition of midpoint would be a good answer as long as the given said maybe D is the midpoint of AB. So if I didn't have that, that, that wouldn't make much sense. So I'm trying to get you here to kind of think of, oh, it's almost like common sense. Um, common sense says, I will never write definition of midpoint unless somewhere before that, somebody wrote D is the midpoint of AB. Um, when I go to like the next one, let's say I talk about se definition of segment bisector. Um, I might say uh, 
Um, let's make up an example. Maybe it kind of looks like this. So I might have the same thing. I might say AD is congruent to BD. But my given cannot be like what was ahead of time, what was above. My given cannot say midpoint. My given would probably say something like um, given maybe DC bisects AB. So your given will depend, will kind of influence what's going to be written as your reasoning. Um, if just to continue on like this example, if I said DC is congruent to CD, well, we have to see a shared side. So look, all those ones have to be side statements, and they have to have given information to back them up. Um, the next one, number four, or number really it's number two, vertical angles theorem. That's a little bit different. So vertical angles theorem would be like it has to be across the street across ang across the street angles so let's say I had something like this I'm just really making up an example so this is what I this is how I'm doing this I just kind of made up some random example what I would have done if I were you guys I would have looked through my worksheets and I would have found something that had where I wrote down vertical angles theorem but what I'm going to say is AEB, so this guy right here, AEB, is congruent to angle CED. Based on vertical angles theorem. All right. Um, corresponding angles, remember corresponding angles only show up if you have, let's see, make an example here I'm just making up an example so what I would have done if I if I instead of if you guys don't want to make up your own example what I would have done is I would have uh, looked through my worksheets and found something where I use a corresponding angles theorem so what was probably given what would have had been given for any time to use corresponding angles I probably would have to see like BC is parallel to DE. Alright, so remember that's two parallel lines cut by a transversal where BC right here would be the parallel line to DE and then AE would be the transversal. And then I would say angle ACB is congruent to angle CED. That's how I'm using this blue figure here, guys not to be confused with the green figure. And the other thing that you probably need to see is same side. Notice my angles right here, this guy and this guy are on the same side. All right, it'll be slightly different with alternate interior angles, um, which would be a good, I'll probably go back to that green picture for alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles, once again, if you don't see given, like let's say we see A, B, a, B is parallel to C, D, you're not going to be able to use it. So like I'm going to use this green figure, A, B is parallel to C, D. Right? That means this is the transversal, this dotted line right here. Those are the parallel lines. So alternate interior angles would be like that. C, D, E, E, A, B. So I would say angle C, D, E is congruent to angle B A E. If I'm using the screen figure right here. Now remember, we still had to have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and this time they were on opposite sides or alternate sides. All right. Um, angle bisector. When I might see angle bisector, probably like let's see. I say something like this. I'm just making up an example real quick. So maybe I would say 
if I, and the given, I would have to see this. I would have to say given um, AC bisects. So I'd have to see the word bisects. And, but this time I'd see an angle. Let's say BAD. All right. If I saw that, then I would have a really good reason to be able to say angle BAC is congruent to angle DAC. All right, and that kind of finishes 17. And it's a, because I spent so much time on 17, it's going to make 18 much, much easier. Because remember, we kind of talked about the, um, the common sense portion of how where these reasons are going to come from. And the reason this is, is everybody seems to really do well with how to start a proof, how to end a proof. It's the in-betweens. And the in-betweens really takes a lot of logic, reasoning, and common sense thinking. So, and that's why it's really important to learn proofs, even if you don't think you're ever going to use them. The key word is thermometer. The key word is thermometer. All right, so make up a reasonable reason that would match up for the reason for size blow. So if I saw AB congruent to CB, but it said it was typed on the paper, all right, I bet that's going to tell me given. All right. Um, AB is congruent to CB. D is the midpoint. And really, it would probably be slightly different than this, but I bet it's going to be definition of midpoint. So if I don't see given something as a midpoint, right, I'm probably not going to use the midpoint definition. If I see this word bisects, I already know if I see that in the given, I bet I'm going to use definition of segment bisector. Now the reason it's not angle bisector is because right now my answer is in givens. Um, this one, look, notice these are the same, so that's why it's probably going to be reflexive. And I'm telling you that something you have to look at it. Remember, you might also see the other way to think of it is called shared sides. All right. Um, just look at it. So there's a couple ways where you might just look at it. So this one could be given. It also could be vertical angles. Those are the two ways that we might just we might just see it depending on how it's set up. If I see if I see this in the in the given, and they're on the same time, I bet we're going to end up using corresponding. Because remember, whenever I see, and remember, we want to see two parallel lines cut by a transversal eventually. Um, if they're on alternate sides, I bet I'm going to say alternate interior angles are congruent. Remember, once again, two parallel lines cut by a transversal. If I see segment bisects ABC. I bet I'm going to say definition of angle bisector. All right, that's it for 18. Like I said, guys, I think I think this is going to make your life a little bit easier if you can kind of start thinking about it as your reason always has to be predicated by some sort of given statement, and those statements kind of have to match up. All right, that's going to be finishing this.